Have you ever contemplated the unparalleled advantage that accompanies being a child of God? It is often said, one with God is a majority. A profound statement that carries an incredible truth. Whoever coined this phrase, without a doubt, comprehended the divine blueprint inscribed in the scriptures. Highlighting God's unfaltering commitment to work in harmony with us to streamline our lives. It's an assurance of a partnership with a powerful God whose consistency surpasses the understanding of humanity and whose favor offers us an edge in the journey of life. Take, for instance, the account of Joshua's transition to leadership in the land of Israel as stated in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 5. After the mantle was passed on to him, God spoke in assurance, No one will stand against you. Much like I was with Moses, I will be with you. Isn't this statement powerfully distinct? Even the world's strongest man is destined to be dethroned. The fastest runner will eventually be outrun, not because they become slower or weaker, but because someone else works to surpass their record. Yet, in the face of God's consistency, strength, glory, dominion, and power, no other entity holds the potential to overthrow him. This leads us to the realization that there is but one who can make a powerful declarations and uphold them. The one with a flawless track record, our divine partner, the Almighty God. Since the beginning of time, until now, and even after, God will still remain God. He will remain the Almighty. He will remain King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He will never fade away with time, grow old, become weaker, or even die and be replaced by something or someone else. The book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 8 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty God is the only one who can do exactly what He says He will do, and nothing can stop it. God is so capable to do that he says he will do. He has no reason to lie about anything. Whatever he promises, he can bring it to pass. You don't have to worry about a thing when God makes you a promise. No, you don't. When he establishes an order, no human might can change it. The book of Numbers Chapter 23, verses 19 through 20 says, God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? I have received a command to bless. He is blessed and I cannot change it. Do you see that? No one can change it. Absolutely no one. So even if God promises you the impossible, something that does not exist in history and has never ever been done or heard of, know that you are about to be the first. Why? Because if God decrees a promise, a thing, even if it was not in existence before, his words bring it to life immediately. He spoke and dry bones came to life, receiving flesh over them. He spoke, and an old man, along with his old and barren wife, gained the ability to bear a child. If Abraham and Sarah were mere coincidences, what about Zechariah and his wife, Elizabeth? He spoke to a virgin, and she gained the ability to conceive a child without having a sexual relationship with a man. In addition to his extraordinary commitment to his people, think about the story of the Israelites' escape from Egypt as told in the book of Exodus. The Israelites found themselves trapped between the approaching Egyptian army and the Red Sea. The situation seemed hopeless, as there was seemingly no way out. 
Yet, in response to Moses' faith, God promised deliverance. Despite the apparent impossibility of the situation, the Red Sea was miraculously parted, providing a safe passage for the Israelites and subsequently closing upon the Egyptian army. This is a remarkable demonstration of God's commitment to His promises. It showed that God is not limited by what seems feasible in the natural world. He creates a way where there seems to be no way. The impossible becomes possible when God is involved. This account of the Israelites serves to reinforce the notion that God's promises are reliable and His power to fulfill them is unlimited. As such, we are encouraged to hold firm to God's word, trusting that He will fulfill His promises to us, no matter how unlikely they may appear. Beloved, having heard this, who would you rather have on your side? Who would you rather depend on? God or man? The psalm is speaking about the greatness and advantage of God's presence with His people, said in the book of Psalm, chapter 114, verses 1 through 8. When Israel came out of Egypt, Jacob from a people of foreign tongue, Judah became God's sanctuary, Israel, His dominion. The sea looked and fled. The Jordan turned back. The mountains leaped like rams, the hills like lambs. Why was it? See that you fled. Why, Jordan, did you turn back? Why, mountains, did you leap like rams? You hills like lambs? Tremble earth at the presence of the Lord? At the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool? The hard rock into springs of water. Can't you see the greatness of God yet? Maybe you have met with disappointments repeatedly and too many people have broken your trust. And now you feel like the concept of trusting God with your struggles, fears, and anxieties is a waste of time. Although it is quite understanding to feel reluctant about trusting again, however, remember this God is not a human being. The things that limit people do not bind him. He is not limited by space or by time. Even lack of resources cannot stop God. Look at the chronicle of the prophet Elisha and the widow. As told in the book of Kings, specifically in chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. This woman was in severe debt, and all she had left was a small jar of oil. Yet, God multiplied that little resource to an extent that she was able to sell the oil, pay her debts, and live off the rest. This extraordinary event demonstrates God's ability to turn scarcity into abundance. It's another vivid demonstration of His unrestricted power and His faithful commitment to providing for His children. So, regardless of your circumstances, how dire or impossible they may seem, remember that there is no situation too desperate for God. His resources and provisions are limitless. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 says, By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Do you remember how he created the heavens and the earth? God, literally called everything into existence out of nothing, using only words. And this same God has all it takes to fix whatever needs to be fixed in your life. Yes, you heard that right. Those things that give you sleepless nights, those worries, anxieties, and fears. They are not beyond fixing. You can trust God with your fears, beloved. You can trust Him with your anxieties, 
You can trust Him with your worries. Whatever the needs in your life may be right now, God is asking you for one thing. Hand them over to Him. The Apostle Peter uses the words, Cast all your cares. The book of 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7 says, Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. Because He loves you. Reflect upon that for a moment. Because He cares for me. God cares for me. No wonder He is interested in helping me. No wonder He hasn't allowed my situation to destroy me just yet. He cares about me. The world and everyone else may not care about me, but God does. Ponder over that a little in your mind. So, God asking you to cast your worries on Him is not because He wants to take any advantage of you. People can do that for their own selfish gains because they need you. However, truth is, you need God more than He needs you. He is God all by Himself, but we are nothing without Him. We are wholly dependent on Him. Reflect upon the symbiotic relationship between the vine and the branches as described in the book of John, chapter 15, verse 5, where Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. This verse highlights our complete reliance on God. As branches cannot bear fruit if disconnected from the vine, similarly, without God, we are powerless. This doesn't mean God is distant or uncaring, quite the contrary. God treasures our dependence on Him because it draws us closer to His heart. By casting our anxieties on Him, we are acknowledging our need for Him. We are nothing. Absolutely nothing without God. One of the biggest challenges of believers today is the problem of faith. They have had the knowledge and heard diverse testimonies of God's faithfulness to those who invite Him to take charge of their situations. Sometimes, many of us even preach and encourage others with it, but when it comes to our turns, we struggle to let God in. We would rather trust somebody who, based on our assessment, has what it takes to help us. Maybe a good work pay, caring heart, an influential office or political position, and so on. We sometimes forget that these are humans we are talking about. They could go bankrupt. They could lose their job or their positions. They could fall sick or die. They could even go back on their word and choose not to fulfill it for one reason or the other. They could choose to do it for someone else, offering them something you aren't offering them. The list can go on, but not so with God. Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 30, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The profundity of this passage is very powerful. This isn't just a casual remark, but a profound promise to us. The yoke in this context is symbolic of the teachings and guidance of Jesus, which, when embraced, lead to true deliverance. Jesus reassures us of his gentleness and humility. He promises that his teachings, the yoke we are to carry, are not burdensome but light by offering comfort to our weary souls. This verse demonstrates God's desire to give us a helping hand in the moment of trouble. He is inviting you and me to experience His peace and to learn 
from his gentle and humble spirit. He is inviting us to step into the liberating freedom and rest he offers. God is deliberately interested in people with burdens of fear, anxiety, and worries so that he can give them relief. God does not want you walking around with unnecessary weights. Listen, there is no award or reward for the most afraid, worrisome, or anxious person. Nowhere in the world or in heaven is anyone ever commended for their fears or their worries. Why? Because fear is a burden. Fear is a tormentor. Your fears limit you. Worry and anxiety erode you little by little until you become a shadow of yourself. These things never empower you to succeed or motivate you to take action. Instead, they keep you unproductive. Therefore, you must know that none of it is from God, but from the devil. God never intended for us to be chained to the shadows of fear, worry, or anxiety. His desire, as reflected in His Word, is for us to live a life of freedom, joy, and peace, free from these oppressive burdens. Consider the word spoken by Jesus, I have come that they may have life, and have it to the full. John chapter 10 verse 10 God's intention for us is abundance, not lack, strength, not weakness, and peace, not anxiety. The devil seeks to cripple you with these burdens, but you have a sure refuge in God. He is your sanctuary, your peace, your rest. But to experience this, you need to surrender your fears, your anxieties, and your worries to Him. The question then is, are you ready to let go? Are you prepared to break the chains of your anxieties and fears and embrace the peace and freedom that God offers? As you reflect on this, remember, your fears do not define you. No, your faith does. And as you contemplate this, ask yourself, will you continue to bear the heavy yoke of fear and anxiety, or will you accept the light yoke that God offers? The choice is yours. Choose wisely. For in this decision lies the path to true freedom and peace.